Hey folks, in this video I want to talk to you about what is a potentiostat and how does it work? You may have a potentiostat in your lab and basically treat it like a black box with some wires coming out of it. You hook it up to your electrochemical cell, but you don't really have an understanding of what is actually happening. Now, while you might not need to build a potentiostat, I think having a fundamental understanding of how a potentiostat works will be very helpful when you're troubleshooting some kind of electrochemistry or instrument related issue. Now, this video is broken up into several sections. The first section I will talk about what a potentiostat actually is, what is its function, as well as some terminology. This is electrochemistry and there tends to be a lot of jargon and random terminology that's just very confusing and I think a few minutes to actually explain uh, what certain terms mean is very helpful. I will then talk about the primary electronic component in a potential set which is the operational amplifier and the feedback mechanism that it provides. Once we have an understanding of what an operational amplifier is and how it works, I will then go over a simplified potentiostat circuit, identifying all the components within the circuit, as well as walking you through what happens when you actually apply a potential and what's happening in your electrochemical cell. So I've included timestamps in the description below if you want to skip ahead. Additionally, we have a full article on what a potential stat is and how it works on the Pine Research website in our knowledge base. Link to that is also in the description below. Okay, so let's start with what is a potential stat. So actually, the word potential stat and its meaning is actually within its name. Potential refers to potential, like an electrical potential, and stat uh, comes from the Greek word stato, which means to stand or set. So a potentiostat is actually something that maintains a constant or set potential within a multi-electrode cell. So a device that you might be familiar with is a thermostat. Breaking the word down, thermo refers to temperature and stat again refers to the Greek word stato, which means to set or stand. A thermostat helps you maintain a constant temperature. So when you set the thermostat to a given temperature, if it gets too cold, the thermostat will heat the room up, and if it gets too hot, the thermostat will cool the room down. So a potentiostat, like a thermostat, will maintain a constant potential in an electrochemical cell. Now in your lab, you may have a potentiostat and it looks something like this. It's just a big box, mysterious box, that you're here to learn a little bit more about what's inside. And it will also have a cell cable, a cable that connects the potentiostat to your electrochemical cell. The cell cable should have several wires, several leads that you connect. It will always have a working electrode lead. In this case, we have a working sense lead as well as a working drive lead, which I'll explain what that is later. It also has a reference electrode lead. It should also have a counter electrode lead for a three electrode system. Additionally, it may also have a gray or a black cord that uh, connects to the chassis or DC common of the potentiostat. So sometimes you will see what is referred to as a potentiostat slash galvanostat system. A galvanostat is a device that maintains a constant current. So potentiostat, constant potential, galvanostat, constant current. And a galvanostat is useful when you're trying to do a potentiometry experiment. Set the current and measure the potential as a response. Now the potentiostat that I just showed you also contains a galvanostat, but is also just for a three electrode system. There are some potentiostats that have two working electrode leads that are tied to the same counter and same reference electrode. And this is referred to as a bipotentiostat. There are other types of potentiostats where there are multiple three electrode cells that are all connected to the same mysterious box, and this is referred to as a multi-channel potentiostat, where you can control multiple three electrode systems. And lastly, potentiostats can be referred to as potential slash galvanostat systems, but have also been referred to as electrochemical workstations. This is all a lot of terminology and jargon for the same thing, which is a potentiostat. Okay, so now that we got all that jargon out of the way, let's talk about how does a potentiostat actually work. So the primary circuit component of a potentiostat is the operational amplifier, or op-amp for short. 
And the important thing about an op amp is that it provides a feedback mechanism that allows a potential set to maintain a constant potential in an electrochemical system. So I think we all have a conceptual idea of what feedback is. It's a change in our behavior as a result of an external stimuli. So one of my favorite analogies of feedback is actually driving a car. As you're driving, you want to maintain a safe distance between you and the car in front of you. If the car starts to accelerate and there's a large distance between you and that car, you'll want to speed up. You'll apply a little bit more acceleration. Similarly, if that car starts to slow down and the distance between you and that car is very, very close, you'll apply the brakes. You'll start to slow down. In this instance, you're using visual feedback in order to adjust your speed so that you maintain a safe distance between you and the car in front of you. In this analogy, distance is the electrical potential and your ability to slow down and accelerate is the operational amplifier. Oh, okay, so now that we have an idea conceptually about how feedback works, Let's talk about the operational amplifier, or op amp for short. The image that you see in front of you is the circuit diagram of an operational amplifier. Let's go through it step by step. First, symbolically, an operational amplifier is represented as a sideways triangle. On the left hand side, you have these two inputs. Uh, the plus symbol, or epsilon plus, refers to the non-inverting input, minus, or epsilon minus, refers to the inverting input. Both of these are a reference to ground. On the right-hand side of the triangle, you have VO, which is the output voltage, and this is also a reference to ground. The equation in front of you describes the relationship between the output voltage and the two input voltages. In an operational amplifier, the output voltage is equal to the difference between the two input voltages multiplied by a scaling factor called the gain, or beta. Beta can have a very large value. It can be 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6. Uh, so it can heavily amplify the difference between those two input voltages. Of course, that's also limited by the power supply, in this case, plus minus 15 volts. Operational amplifiers have a few very important characteristics. One is that they have a very high input impedance. That is ZI in this diagram. ZI is usually on the order of 10 to the 12 ohms, very large resistance. So what this means is that practically no current will flow into an operational amplifier. It only accepts an input voltage. Similarly, the output impedance, ZO, is very low. It's between one and 10 ohms. Operational amplifiers also have a large bandwidth. That means that it can accept input and output a wide range of frequencies. Lastly, operational amplifiers are very small. They have a very small footprint. They're less than one square centimeter. So very small, very cute. Schematically, an operational amplifier will look more like this. This is the simplified circuit diagram of an operational amplifier. Things like beta, the input resistance, the output resistance, the power supplies, those are all assumed. The only things that re are really important are the input voltages and the output voltage. So an operational amplifier by itself has the ability to amplify even a small voltage to possibly unusable or even dangerous levels. One millivolt could become a thousand volts. To overcome this, part of the output voltage is routed back into the inverting input. And this type of circuit is called a voltage follower. And in the voltage follower, part of the output voltage is routed back into the inverting input. And this creates what is called a feedback loop. When an operational amplifier utilizes feedback, the inverting and the non-inverting inputs are forced to equal each other. And in this circuit diagram, you can see that the output voltage is also equal to the inverting input. And in this diagram as well, the input voltage is equal to the non-inverting input. So if we use the transitive property of math, if the inverting input is equal to the output voltage and the uh, in non-inverting input is equal to the inverting input and the non-inverting input is equal to the input voltage, 
then the input voltage is equal to the output voltage, hence the name a voltage follower. And this is an example of how an operational amplifier utilizes feedback. Now that we understand how an operational amplifier works and how it utilizes feedback, we're now at the stage where we can actually describe how a potentiostat works. The following is a simplified potentiostat circuit diagram. Let's go through all the parts. On the left hand side, you have the potentiostatic set point. This is where you, as the user, set the potential. So whether or not you're doing a triangular potential waveform for cyclic voltammetry, or a step potential, or a pulse sequence, it's all coming from the potentiostatic set point. The voltage from the potentiostatic set point goes into the inverting input in a high gain op amp. The output voltage from the high gain op amp goes into the counter electrode lead. So if you remember from earlier, we have our cell cable. The green lead, which is our counter electrode, is actually where the output to that high gain op amp goes. Below that, we have the reference and the working sense line. So this is the reference electrode lead, and this is the working sense lead. Those two leads are connected to the inverting and non-inverting inputs on a low gain operational amplifier called the electrometer. This is also sometimes referred to as a true difference operational amplifier. The output from the electrometer goes into a voltmeter where we can measure the potential, but part of the output voltage is fed back into the non-inverting input in the high gain operational amplifier. In the lower right hand corner, we have the working drive lead, which is typically shorted with the working sense lead to your working electrode. This can be classic carbon, platinum, gold, whatever conductive material you're interested in studying. And the working drive lead is then connected to a sense resistor called R work, which is then tied to ground. There is a voltmeter, EI, that measures the voltage across this sense resistor, R work. Let's walk through typical potentiostat operation. You have a three electrode cell, and you want to apply plus one volt on your working electrode versus the reference electrode. So at the start of the experiment, you set the potential at the potentiostatic set point. This is a positive potential, probably plus one volt, but it's not versus the reference electrode, it's actually versus ground. The potentiostatic set point is always applied with respect to ground or the instrument ground. That positive potential goes into the inverting input of your high gain op amp. At this point, there's nothing going into the non-inverting input, so that signal actually gets amplified a lot. But that plus one volt will actually be inverted because it's going into the inverting input and it comes out through the output voltage as a large negative potential to your counter electrode. And this should make sense. If you want a positive potential at your working electrode, your counter electrode needs to be negative the two need to maintain charge balance. So you have this potential at your counter electrode and current now flows at the counter electrode. It flows into the reference electrode, the working sense electrode, and the working drive electrode. But remember, the reference electrode and the working sense electrode are actually connected to the inputs of a operational amplifier. And if you remember, the input impedance on an operational amplifier is very large. And so practically no current will flow into the operational amplifier, the electrometer. This means that the only viable path for current to flow in this system is to the working drive electrode. Now, as current flows through your electrochemical cell, you will get a ohmic drop or a voltage drop. This is usually due to solution resistance, Faradaic and non-faradaic processes. This means that the potential at the reference electrode and the working sense electrode will change. Now, if you're unaware, reference electrodes by design are supposed to maintain a constant or stable potential. Let me show you. Let's get some, some goggles on, need to get some gloves. 
So this is a silver silver chloride reference electrode. It may be a little hard to see, but by design this is a silver wire with silver chloride in a glass tube that contains saturated potassium chloride solution. And at the end we have a small frit. So the potential of the reference electrode is based on the solution composition inside this glass tube. And by design, it's not supposed to change. So this means that any changes that are occurring in your electrochemical cell, any potential changes, have to be due to the working sense electrode. The reference electrode by design is not supposed to change. The voltage difference between the reference electrode and the working sense electrode are fed into the electrometer. That voltage difference becomes the output voltage, which we can measure at the voltmeter, but is also fed into the non-inverting input of our high gain op amp. Now remember, for an operational amplifier with a feedback loop, which our high gain op amp has, the inverting and non-inverting inputs are forced to equal each other. So in this example, we have the potentiosatic set point that has set the potential to plus one volt. So unless the non-inverting input from the feedback is equal to plus one volt, the output voltage from the high gain op amp will continue to adjust the voltage at the counter electrode until the non-inverting input is equal to the inverting input on the high gain op amp. And this is how a potentiostat is able to maintain a constant potential with respect to a reference electrode. As there are changes in the voltage, the high gain op amp will start to change the output voltage of the counter electrode until they are equal. So current flows between the counter electrode and the working drive electrode. That current will then flow across the working sense resistor, which is our work, and into ground. We use a voltmeter, uh, EI, in order to measure the voltage across the resistor. We actually measure the current at the working electrode indirectly. We use this voltmeter to measure the voltage, and because we know the value of this known resistor, we put it there, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current, because the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So the current at the working electrode is actually measured indirectly through this voltmeter. The potential is measured at the uh, output voltage of the electrometer, this voltmeter, and the potential is applied through the potentiostatic set point. And this is how a potentiostat works. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to us on our website. We're more than happy to help. And I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you soon.